from a place we're not allowed to reveal. It's the, 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 the Tom Likas Show. What the f*** is with this guy? Who is he? And now, and now, here he is, Tom Likas. Thank you for tuning in to the Tom Likas Show. This is where America gets together to talk about the issues you really care about. It's a different kind of radio talk program. We're the radio talk show that is not hosted by a right-wing wacker or a convicted felon. No. I am your host. Write down our telephone number. You're going to need it. It's 1-800-5800-TOM. 1-800-5800-866. Thank you for tuning in. Thanks for being part of our program. Here we are together again on the radio. A listener named Chris sent me an article. He was one of several listeners who sent this same article. And it comes from a, a newspaper in Australia called the Daily Telegraph. Here is the email from Chris, one of our listeners here in the United States. He says, I know that you are going to talk about this. Australia has seen the light. This ties in directly with your topics of women in the workplace using maternity leave and tax exemptions for people who have children. If someone wants to make a child, they should prepare in advance by saving in order to make it through the first six months of the child's life or however long they want to be out of the workplace. I can't buy a Maybach if I can't afford it. <laughs> And a Maybach does not cost the taxpayers anything. Doling out government benefits to people who are irresponsible does nothing to encourage responsible behavior. In my opinion, the costs to the government, tax exemptions, school funding, child care, health care, WIC, outweigh the benefits that result from increased demand for child-oriented products. And uh, that's Chris's email right there in a nutshell. Let's uh, read the story again. Several listeners sent this story in from the Daily Telegraph of Australia. Here it is. The headline is, Babies a drag on the economy, report says. Boy, if you ever put a headline like that in an American paper, people would flip. Babies a drag on the economy, report says. Here is the story. This again from Australia. So you may hear some governmental agency names or terms that are a little unfamiliar. It's because it's not from an American paper. It's from Australia. They say forget those plans to have a third child for the country. Because further increases in the birth rate could harm the economy. The nation's productivity watchdog has warned. A major analysis of Australia's increasing fertility rate said it was at its highest level for 25 years. But Australia's Productivity Commission has warned that future increases may aggravate rather than solve the problem of the aging of the population. This is because it will shift women out of the workplace while they care for babies, depressing labor supply, and reducing the taxation base as our population ages. The small number of extra babies born. Are you listening to this? The small number of extra babies born would make little difference to the rate of population aging, the commission said. By the way, the same thing's happening in this country. The baby boomers are all moving into the... Uh, age group now where they start collecting social security and there are concerns that there are not enough young people following along to pay the costs not to mention whether there'll be any left for them when they get to that age the, the story continues to say the women having the babies would be exacerbating 
the financial impacts on the government of the aging of the population because the tax breaks offered to parents to have children occur up front while the cost savings of a bigger working population and bigger tax base from extra children are deferred until they are of working age. The commission's views were of particular interest as next month it is expected to hand down a much anticipated report into whether Australia should adopt a paid maternity leave scheme. We talked about that on the program recently. People saying that uh, women should be paid to take maternity leave here. And I guess in Australia, they're actually uh, considering doing it. says here that this report found the $5,000 baby bonus, which is being, uh, which is expected to be rolled into any new paid maternity leave scheme, had only a partial role in lifting the fertility rate. The baby bonus represented only a 1% reduction in the lifetime costs of a first child which would cost its parents at least 385,000 Australian dollars over its lifetime. The report said any significant fertility effect from the bonus would suggest the presence of short-sightedness by parents about the lifetime costs of raising children. By the way, the same thing's true in this country. I mean, the amounts quoted to raise a child range anywhere from a quarter million to $400,000. I've read the reports, I've read them on the air, I've read them to myself. It says here the commission said the family tax benefit payments, averaging about $5,000 per family per year, this is in Australia now, were more likely to have had a bigger impact on lifting the national fertility rate. These payments cut the cost of children by 6% a year, and the generosity of those benefits increased significantly after the year 2000. This is in Australia. So as a result, now you're giving people money, uh, giving them little benefits, little bonuses when they have children. Well, now more than 285,000 births were registered in Australia last year, the highest level in 25 years. The commission said this was mainly a catch-up effect as women deferred childbirth to later in life. It said having reached older ages, they are now having those postponed babies. The commission said the fertility rate would be even higher, but for the effects of high house prices and better educated women. <laughs> Think about that. What did they just say there? The, for- the fertility rate among less educated women is higher? Well, that's extremely politically incorrect. I've always told you that having babies uh, will be handled by the the poor and the dumb. And in Australia, they're saying that outright, uh, not only in the newspaper, but this uh, official government commission said it. Says here, more highly educated women could earn good money if they work rather than stay at home to take care of the children. And this had depressed the birth rate. The higher cost of housing meant it took longer to afford a house, which has delayed childbearing. So they tried to get people to have more kids by offering bonuses, and now look what's happening. Women are taking time off to uh, uh, to take care of those kids. The amount of people available for the labor force has shrunk, thereby increasing the cost of labor and probably increasing inflation. So uh, what they're saying, in a nutshell, and let's bring this back to the United States, is that offering people financial incentives, which they've been creeping into doing in Australia for some time, offering people financial incentives to have children, like the ones we offer, uh, you know, family tax credits, uh, uh, earned income credits, uh, child care credits, whatever, offering or, or even offering them uh, what people have proposed on this program, a paid maternity leave, in the long run, has a deleterious, look it up, deleterious effect on the economy. It's lousy for the economy. And I agree, we shouldn't give people one penny to have a baby. You're going to have a baby anyway. If you want to have a baby, you're going to do it. I think most of the people having children are not sitting there studying the tax code to see what benefits they have coming to them. Most people just forget to go to the store and buy a condom. 
We should not be subsidizing this. It's stupid. It's politically expedient. Politicians love to do it because so many people have children. Everybody says, oh, sure, I'm in favor of that. But what you are doing is, number one, you are transferring wealth from people like me who have no children or older people whose children are grown. You're transferring wealth from people like that to young people who are running up their credit cards and spending a fortune and really are not being financially responsible. Why should we be rewarding people to do things that they don't want to do? It makes sense for the government to give people financial incentives to do things they don't want to do that would be good for for the community. For example, uh, you've heard the term sweat equity. There are many cities around the country uh, that offer tax breaks for people who, who uh, take old dilapidated buildings in the inner city and refurbish them. And they hire local people who've been out of work to do the work. And uh, so uh, th- these are things that would not be done without tax credits and incentives. I think it's a great idea. We have offered tax credits and incentives to people to keep certain businesses in, in a particular state. When the, uh, when the state of New York wanted to attract the film industry from Los Angeles, they offered tax credits to TV producers and filmmakers. And now the most, uh, uh, I guess the highest profile example of the result of that is the TV show Ugly Betty, a show that uh, in its script takes place in New York but was filmed in L.A., is now actually moving to New York City because tax breaks were offered. And of course, everybody in L.A. has been screaming about that. But there's an example where people didn't want to film in New York. It was too expensive and they didn't want to do it. A tax break got a company to move to New York to do their business there. Tax breaks should be given to people to get them to do things they don't want to do. But we shouldn't be giving people tax breaks for having a baby any more than we should give them tax breaks for taking a dump or breathing in and breathing out or driving their car to work. These are things you're going to do anyway. And now in Australia, they've not only found out that uh, uh, these incentives are not needed, But the increasing uh, birth rate and the increasing number of women staying home to take care of babies is now harming the labor market. It's been bad for the economy. We should not give people any incentives to have children at all. No financial incentives, uh, no free child care, no free anything. Okay, you want to have children, have them. If I want to do something in my personal life that costs money, I'll do it. I wanted to buy a house. In um, the, the wine country of uh, uh, the central coast of California. Uh, the only tax incentive I got is the same one that you would get. And that is I get to write off my mortgage. But even then I can only write off up to $1.1 million. And after that I can't. I own more real estate than that. So, uh, you know, I wanted to go and uh, buy that house. And I went and did it. Nobody had to give me an incentive to do it. You know, I do the things I want to do, and I don't do the things I don't want to do. Now, if there's something that uh, I could do for the community, and there would be an incentive for me to do it, like, for example, there are many people who would never contribute to charity if they couldn't write it off on their tax return. I think that's a good thing, giving people a tax break so they will contribute to charity. I think that's fantastic. But having babies, that's something people are going to do anyway. You can't stop them from doing it. So I say no financial incentives, no exemptions, no child care credits. In fact, I think everybody should start off with three exemptions. I've said this in the past, but we haven't talked about this recently. Everybody, every adult should start off with three exemptions. When you have one child, you lose an exemption. Now you're down to two. Two children, you're down to one exemption. Three children, no exemption. More than three, you pay. Why? Because that child is going to cost us in every possible way. That child is going to cost us in terms of uh, 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 education, health care, school lunches. How many ways do we subsidize children? Community colleges? There's a lot of cost involved. I say if you want to have children, you should pay for it. Doesn't that make sense? Come on! 
1-800-5800-TOM. 1-800-5800-866. Does she know you want to leave? Well, I mean, she senses it every now and then. I get in these moods and uh, let her kind of feel that you know I really don't want to be here, you know? Because if she gets that idea, she might get knocked up. Uh, she ain't getting knocked up by me, man. I rolled my gym hat on 24-7. The Tom Likes Show. Like his show at 1 800 5800 Tom. Thank you for tuning in. Well, Australia's a little ahead of us in terms of giving people bonuses and benefits for having children. And now they're finding out that it's having a, a bad effect on their economy. It's documented. We don't want to go in that direction. We need to stop giving people tax incentives to do things they're going to do anyway. Uh, this is Paul on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hey, Tom. Thanks for taking the call. Sure. Hey, listen. You sound like you're you're opposed to any incentives, so why why the mortgage break? Are you opposed to getting the uh, deduction well, on your mortgage? First of all, I'm glad you asked that question because you must be a new listener. Uh, first of all, I'm not, I did not say that I'm in favor of no tax incentives. I'm in favor of tax incentives to get people to do things they wouldn't do anyway that are good for the community. I, I spelled out that I was in favor of tax incentives like sweat equity. Were you listening when I talked about that? Um, perhaps not. Sorry. Uh-huh. <laughs> so I am in favor of incentives that get people to do things that they would not do that are good for the, co- the, the community or for the country or for the economy. I am not in favor of giving people incentives to do things they would do anyway. That, that they're called incentives for a reason. Now okay. uh, let's talk about let's talk about mortgage interest. I came out against mortgage interest deductions years ago, and I'm still against them. That okay. doesn't mean I'm not going to take mine because it's the only deduction I get. But personally, I think that the vast majority of these uh, uh, exemptions and deductions should be eliminated. Uh, okay. So, uh, and uh, I am, uh, I, I, by the way, happen to believe that real estate would be even cheaper if we did not offer people the opportunity to write off mortgage interest. Sure it would, sure it would, and I'm sure it would. Yeah, because it brings a, a lot of losers who don't, a lot of losers who don't understand the tax code and don't understand the economy. They go out and buy real estate like condos and stuff that they don't understand or even timeshares. Mm-hmm. They go out and buy this stuff and get a mortgage. You go, well, I can write off the interest, but you don't realize you're still paying the interest. Your <laughs> interest you wouldn't have been paying if you didn't make the purchase in the first place. Right. But hey, back to the, 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 the childbirth thing and all that, the population. Now in Austria, I guess they're paying people to have kids, and I think they're in Sweden. You've heard that, right? In Sweden, they pay people to do just about everything. Sweden has one of the highest tax burdens in the world, if not the right. highest. Okay, but in Austria, yeah, I guess the, the, where the populations are declining, that's what their concern is, that the population is going to kind of die out. I understand that they're, that's their concern, but what's happened in Australia, they've been offering these incentives, and now they have found that the benefits are not what they thought they would be. Because they didn't calculate in the, uh, uh, the problem when women leave work to take home of, to take care of children. When you have less people available to work, that raises wages. And when wages go up, inflation goes up. Do you understand? Yeah, maybe they gotta let people immigrate, you know? Well, you know, you're trying, you're zigzagging all over the place. The fact is, they, uh, they've been doing this in Australia, and now they have a government report that says this was a bad idea. Okay. But how about the other countries, like, like Austria and some of those places? That well, maybe it's not the fa- same effect. I don't know. Well, again, if you want to pay 90% uh, tax rate, like they do in some of those European countries and uh, have pretty much socialism, well, I guess we could talk about that. I thought yeah. we were supposed to be a free enterprise country with lower taxes and more uh, opportunity to be an entrepreneur and things like that. If you if you want to live in a socialist country, uh, I mean, Sweden pretty much is a socialist country. Right, right. No, no, I like it here. I like it here. So. Yeah, you know, they're a nice socialist country and they're nice people and all that, but let's face it, take a look. Uh, just do a little Googling and see what the tax rates are in Sweden. And then you tell me if you want to offer all the benefits that the government offers in Sweden. Yeah. It's worth thinking about. It's worth thinking about. 
Well, uh, I don't know uh, if you uh, feel like you're not paying enough in taxes. I don't know if you want to pay more in taxes. And frankly, uh, if you want to pay 75, 80, 90 percent uh, tax rate, well, maybe you should move to Sweden. Yeah, that's too cold, you know. Well, there we go. All right. Thank you, Tom. Have a great Paul, day. thank you. And yes, again, I am opposed to a write-off for mortgage interest. I am. But uh, I fully am taking my deduction this year for my two homes. You bet I am. 1-800-5800-TOM. Here's an email from Michael. Michael writes in and says, Tom, get this. At Paramount High School here in the L.A. Basin, they have free child daycare for mothers who are still in high school and need the help so they can graduate. Can you believe the taxpayers are paying for this crap? This just makes me irate and also makes me think how this much encouraged the little high school sluts just to keep out pumping little brats without paying for the consequences. Thank you, Michael. I agree with you. There should not be any daycare in high schools, period. Period. And as a taxpayer in the city of Los Angeles, I, I, this just makes me berserk, angry angry and all it does is encourage the little sluts to have more babies because they see the little babies coming to school and everybody goes oh look how cute i'm gonna have one of my own 1-800-5800-TOM christina on the tom likas show hello christina hello tom how are you i'm great that is good well i am a teacher in a um, san fernando valley in a lower income um school and i was telling your um your phone guy, I forgot his name, sorry, but um, I was telling him how I see all these mommies coming in, and you can guess that they're not usually the legal ones, they're all rolling in with the strollers, and then also their bellies are out to here, and they're also picking up their two kids, and God only knows how much of a credit they're getting, and it amazes me that they get a credit for, for spitting out kids, yet I um, I don't get anything for keeping my myself unimpregnated, you know, I guess you can say, um, throughout all these years. And it just amazes me that we can, you know, pat, pat people on the back for birth and babies. Well, I, I agree with that. Uh, uh, the fact is that, you know, isn't it interesting? I don't know if you've been through a divorce or child custody case. It's so interesting how when people get divorced, Child Protective Services gets involved in what kind of uh, place the kid is living and uh, uh, the, how the child is being raised and uh, what kind of lifestyle the parents lead. Yet it's perfectly okay for a 12-year-old or a 13-year-old or a 14-year-old to have a baby and keep it. I know. <laughs> Isn't that outrageous? It's, it's crazy to me because I see some of former students going, oh, my friend just had a baby. It's so cute. I want one, too. And it's like they talk about it like it's a puppy. And I'm like, oh, God. <laughs> Keep your legs closed, honey. <laughs> Outrageous. Yeah, but thanks for bringing up this topic. This is really, really something that needs to be spoken about. I'm here to help, too. All right, thank you. Thank, thank you for the call. 1-800-5800-TOM. It's Ryan on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hey, Tom, I just wanted to say that uh, this country was structured on family. What does and that even mean? Uh, by the way. I don't even know what that means, but uh, on the face of what you're saying, it's not even true. It is true. The family How is so? the cornerstone of this country. How so? so? And I blame the downfall of family. How so? How because so? How so? Let me finish. Families are the ones who started uh, uh, by having kids and, and uh, um, reproducing. And, uh, so they were not reproducing in Eng wait 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 they were not reproducing in England before uh, they came here as the pilgrims. Yeah, I'm sure they were. There was no reproduction in Spain. There was no there reproduction was. Uh, in France. There, there was. was no reproduction in Holland. All there the was. countries that came here and staked the claim, there was no reproduction. Hey, was Tom. there or not? Was there or not? Yeah, yeah, there were there were fam there were people having kids back then. What I'm saying. So why though, is why that, why are you saying that this country is any more family oriented than any other country? When it was founded, it was founded with family orientated goals, such really as like uh, such as what? Such as the father, mother, children, home. Where did it family, say that? No, no, that's not even true. Do you know what this I'm country was founded on? 
You're going to shut up for a minute, and I'm, go- I'm going to respond to what you just said. Do you know what this country was founded on? It was founded on commercial concerns, people looking for places to uh, uh, buy and sell and trade goods. It was based on genocide. We killed hundreds of thousands of Native Americans in taking over this country. Uh, it was based on religious, uh, uh, and, and not uh, any one religion. It was based on the attempt to get freedom to, to, to worship, freedom of any religion, as opposed to England, where they told you what religion you were going to be, and that was that. Uh, women uh, did not have the right to vote. In fact, only landowners had the right to vote in the very beginning. And there was nothing. There's nothing in the Constitution about family. There is nothing in the Declaration of Independence about family. All of this stuff you're saying, you're simply pulling out of your ass or you're pulling it off the Christian Broadcasting Network or wherever you're getting it. But in the real world, for people who've read books, for people who've read the documents, what you're saying is out and out false. It's a lie. I'm glad you brought up the freedom of religion, uh, because this country was founded as a Christian nation. No, uh, it, it wasn't. No, wasn't it wasn't. It most, no, most, it wasn't. The founding fathers weren't Christian? No, actually, many of them were deists. Do you know what a deist is? Puritans? Christian? Look up what a deist is. You know what? Crack open a book, son. It appears to me you've done no reading, and all you've done is listen to conservative talk radio or Christian television or whatever. You need to do some real reading, which you haven't okay. done. You have no knowledge of American history whatsoever. Okay. You're not wow. in a position to be commenting on this. Okay, well, can I comment on, on uh, well, children? Well, and, uh, more, more ignorant comments based on, on not having read anything? Sure, go right ahead. Okay, I also wanted to say that when you take away tax breaks from from these people that have children, uh, you're also taking food off the table. You're also taking... No, you're uh, not. No, you're not. No, you're not. uh, No, you're not. No, you're not. And by the way, that food shouldn't be on your goddamn table in the first place. If you can't afford to have children, you shouldn't be having them. That's that. And Tom, didn't you say you came from a family that had you had six siblings? And a one no, I point. didn't. That's not what I said. I said there were four children, not six. Okay, four children. Imagine in a one-bedroom apartment. Imagine if your dad had his money taken away after his third child. We didn't have all those tax breaks. Do you know that? When I was born and when I was a child and when my sisters were born, they didn't have all the tax breaks they have now. They didn't. Okay, well, can you imagine, though, if they made him pay? No one's being made to pay anything. These are benefits that are not guaranteed and should not be guaranteed. They should be guaranteed. No, they shouldn't. Why why should people whose children are grown or people who don't have children subsidize those who do? Because... Children are the future of this country. Baloney. Uh, that, 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 that does not mean. But there first are of all, citizens of this country. There's there are children in every country. Are so what? Are that doesn't mean we should pay you to have them. You're going to have children anyway. People like you that are godless and that have no. Money there we go. And, and That's where it came from. Christian television. I I can tell by the rhetoric uh, that you watch these Christian TV shows, and that's what this is all about. Uh, you know what? You should call one of those shows. Call uh, Dr. Uh, Dobson or whoever. Call those shows. And don't be calling up here and spreading this misinformation, this rewritten history of the United States. I won't have it. Stupid. Tom like it. 1-800-5800-TOM. 1-800-5800-866. I'm not paying anybody's student loans off. I'm not paying anybody's car payments. I'm not helping anybody pay the mortgage on their grandmother's uh, house. I'm not doing it. Damn straight, Tom preaching. It's the Tom Likas Show. The Tom Likas Show. One eight hundred five eight hundred Tom. Thank you for tuning in. Thanks for being part of our program. We appreciate it. Australia has done a report. They, uh, they've been given all kinds of tax breaks and bonuses and incentives to people for having children. They're talking about paid maternity leave, paid for by the government. Well, wait a minute. Hold on. A government report says it's wrecking their economy. It's 1-800-5800-TOM. This is Tina on the Tom Likas Show. She's calling from outside a sizzler, it says here. Yeah, hi, Tom. Hi. How are you? Great. Listen to you every day. Good. But, Tom, come on. 
this is a little too much, don't you think? What is? Well, we, if we don't reproduce, we won't have our people in the world anymore. People, that you're not hearing what I'm saying. People will reproduce without incentives. You know what? Before there was an income tax, people were having children. Mm -hmm. Are you aware of that? Well, what do we do when we have wars? And we have to Again, do you hear what I said? We are were people reproducing before there was an income tax? Why are you so worried about the income taxes? Uh, because that's where a lot of these benefits come in. Before there were incentives to give birth, weren't people having children? Yes. So why do we need to give them more incentives when they're already doing it? Tom, you know what? I listened to you yesterday about the... No, no. Answer, you will answer this question or I'm going to end the conversation. I don't want to talk about what I talked about yesterday or a week ago or a month ago. Answer the question I asked you. Yes, we will always have kids in the world, okay? And, and people will continue having children whether or not there are tax incentives, correct? I guess, if, yeah, if they keep trying, if you, but you make it so difficult... What do you mean I make it? How do I make it difficult? Help the people have, I mean, if the people they have, don't need help. People were having children before they were tax incentives. You just said so. But why make it so hard on them? If why do we need to give them tax incentives to do something they're going to do anyway? Not necessarily. Not, not necessarily people, what? Those are having a real hard time and they just need a little... Fight. That's not our problem. You know what? If they can't afford to have children, here's my response. Don't have them. So what do you mean? Have an abortion? Is that what you mean? Don't get pregnant. Oh, oh wait a minute. Don't have don't babies. Don't have babies. Oh, Correct. That means don't have sex, Tom. No, no, it doesn't. It means and yes, have an abortion. If you get pregnant by accident, then have an abortion. Oh, yes. Oh, yeah. Now we're talking about abortion. Yeah, I, I've talked well, about no, abortion. Sex, it is but, uh, no secret on this program that, right? that I am a proponent of abortion, that I have paid for four abortions, and I would do it again. There's no doubt about it. This is not a secret. I know. That. You are not it's revealing. Fine. You think you're undressing me here on the air. You think that you're revealing something that people didn't know. I've said this millions of times. Everybody knows how I feel about abortion. And yes, if you get pregnant and you can't afford to raise a child, have an abortion. Yes, have one. Yes. Suppose they have an accident and they happen to get pregnant. They should have an abortion. But that's not Christian. Or the law should require... We're not a Christian nation. We're a secular nation. You are, Tom. What? You're a secular person. No, no. We're a secular nation. We have separation of church and state. Sometimes I think you're the devil. Well, you know what? Again, darling, go back to Christian Radio where you came from. You and the other eight listeners, go back there. Jesus Christ, these morons. 1-800-5800-TOM, that's our telephone number. Roy on the Tom Likas Show, hello. Hey, Tom, how you doing, buddy? I'm doing great. Yeah, I have a question. What's your uh, output on uh, the government giving loans to students to go to college? Uh, well, first of all, the government doesn't give loans. Uh, banks give loans. They are guaranteed by the government. You understand the difference? Right, right. Okay, so the government is not lending out money, right? Uh, uh, but the government, uh, I believe, the only time we should be subsidizing your student loan is if you are majoring in something we need you to major in, and that uh, we should only subsidize you if you graduate. If you don't graduate, we shouldn't give you anything. Right. I think that if uh, someone is uh, being subsidized and they're given the money, that if they don't graduate, then uh, they have to sign a contract saying that all the money that the government's given them, if they don't graduate, they have to pay it back. Have you ever wondered how much higher tuitions are because the, the, the government subsidizes student loans? Oh, probably. Amazing. You know, if we didn't subsidize student loans, maybe tuitions would go down. Yeah, because it would be harder to get and uh, not so many people would just... Be going, oh, I'm just going to get a government loan. Cause I, well, I look what low-interest uh, mortgages did to the real estate market. Oh, yeah, correct. This is something everybody can understand. 
So, so when people complain about the high cost of tuition at universities, did it ever strike anybody? It's because we subsidize student loans. Yeah. Yeah, I think that uh, you know it would make people think more uh, to go to college if you know you know people go in they're all oh, I'll major in this for a while and this for a while. You know, it's it's, it's ridiculous. Right. They're wasting money. They're wasting. That's it. they're wasting I, our money. You know what? Let, let me give you an example. Let's say I read a story in the Los Angeles Times that says we need more Spanish speaking doctors in this country. So if we determine that that's necessary in the inner city, here's what you do. You tell people we will subsidize your student loan and even your education. But you will not see the benefits of your subsidy until we find out what you're doing for a living, the address of your office, where you work, what you do. And if you want to get that benefit, just like anyone who uh, gets a variety of other government benefits like unemployment checks or welfare, you're going to have to show documentation that shows you're doing that job. Right. I do not believe in giving uh, subsidized student loans to anybody and everybody. I, it's wrong. Yeah. Yeah, I think that uh, the student and the parent should have to sign a big waiver saying if the student does not graduate or default in any of their classes or whatever, then any aid that was given must be paid back as if it was a loan from the government, and then they have to pay it all back. But well, not only that, I think completed. the student loans should be at the market rate for whatever a loan is. Yeah. You know, if, if you're getting a student loan for 7%, but uh, the average loan is 9 10 or 11%, like a consumer loan, uh -huh. that's what you should pay until you prove that you have taken a position that benefits our country. Right, right. I know my uh, father-in-law, he actually works for the rail yard, and what they do is they tell him if he goes to college and he brings good grades back, they'll actually pay for him, but he has to pay out of pocket first and because they want him to be more educated so he's better because he's a manager at the uh, rail yard. And they say if you come back and you go to school and you make good grades and you make yourself a better person that you know helps the company, we will pay You what? That... Uh, all right, very nice. Zero tolerance policy, folks. Yeah. One eight hundred five eight hundred. Tom. He said the F word. As good as his call was, he had to go. One curse, and you're gone. By the way, we're getting a lot less of these now. Let's say hello to Blanca on the Tom Likas show. Hello. Hello, Tom. How are you? I'm great. Okay, I just want to let you know that I've been a listener for the longest time. And you are, I, you know what, I have four boys of my own. And as soon as they get old enough, say 16, 17, they will be listening to you per me. Okay, now I am Catholic. I am a single mother of five kids, four boys, one girl. I pay for everything on my own. I do not get any type of welfare or financial assistance from the government. I work on my own. I'm blessed to make good enough money. Now, I agree with you 100% on the abortion issue. I didn't do it myself because, you know, I am who I am. But all these dum-dums that get offended when you say you are for abortion is because they have something loose in their head. If they think getting pregnant is going to be an accident, hello, there's contraception. If they think that having um, an abortion is an evil thing, well, hello, it's also evil to go have premarital sex. Now, if they're going to do it, why not be smart about it and be careful and take the precautions necessary? I totally agree with you, of course. Yeah, and that's why, that's why I say, you know what, I am 100% Catholic, very Catholic. I, whatever, you know, the issues were with my kid's father or not, the same father for all five children, married 14, almost 15 years, and, you know, things didn't work out fine for whatever reason it was. But I can't believe how these females get so offended by what you say. You say nothing but the truth. I agree with everything you say, and I wish they would look at it in the point that you're making, and if they had any type of common sense, they would understand how right you are. Well, I, I think so many people just uh, latch out of those buzzwords and those phrases like, but children of the future, this country was based on family, and it, it, what does that have to do with giving people tax incentives? I don't understand. 
Yeah, and you know what? And that's another thing. I pay taxes, and if only you knew how having five children and how much taxes I actually pay for all the dum dums that go on and accidentally have children, and then they're living on the system. Now I pay for that because we all they, pay for it, except for exactly. the losers who don't work. Exactly. And then they go around saying abortion is not good, but it was an accident. I got pregnant, but I had a one night stand, but I went ahead and did what I shouldn't have done anyway. Well, they wouldn't get pregnant if they weren't doing what they shouldn't be doing. So they're going to throw a moral issue on abortion when they're doing something wrong to begin with. Great points, Blanca. Thank you. Appreciate the call. 1-800-5800-TOM. That's our telephone number. John on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hey, sir. How are you doing today? Doing great. All right. Um, well, you had, uh, I totally agree with you. I think we should not, um, we should not reward the kids who have kids, can afford them. I agree. But what you were saying earlier was that, um, that, that was a concern thing, which I totally disagree well, that's, with. That. That's not what I said, uh, although I will say that the uh, over the last eight years, there have been many more benefits piled on to people having children by your president and mine, George Bush. Well, yeah, but Democrats... Are Don't say yeah, want. but. Don't yeah, but me. He had, he had the power to veto any legislation that came by. He didn't. Well, it's because he was too busy with the war. All right, I'm done with the excuses. You know what? Yeah, I, I if he's that. too busy to be president, we didn't we didn't put a gun to his head and say become the president. We didn't. Look, look, just because I'm conservative doesn't mean I'm pro. No, but but pro don't be a war. moron, okay? Pro look, pro I am not a I am not a Democrat or a Republican, and I'm not a liberal or a conservative. I'm a libertarian. Yeah, I understand that. And and what I believe is that conservatives are just as likely to waste your money. And tax the crap out of you as Democrats. In what ways? No, I only have 20 seconds, John, and believe right. me, it wouldn't be enough to give you the entire list. The Tom Likas Show.